I want to talk to you about a subject. Throughout this 21 days, maybe you felt like it was more like a reset, that God needed to pause you so you could get your life back on track, discernment, clarity. For some, for some of us specifically, the last three weeks wasn't a reset, but it was more like an update. Come on, somebody say update. It was time for God to take what he has been downloading to you and compel you long enough to pause so that he could get you to apply it. Because again, God's not a forcer. I've said this for a long time. This whole 21 days of prayer is like, well, it was good enough for them, but I didn't have to pray. No, but the truth is God's not a forcer, but if you make room, he'll fill every time. And this is what I keep telling our church folks. It, does, it doesn't stop yesterday. No, to be in prayer continually, to seek the face of God continually, to get up early and pray. Come on, how many of y'all are hungry for the things of God? Come on. So it's not a reset, it's an update. So as we kick off week four, the finale of even more, I want to go back to our series anchor verse, which says Romans chapter 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with, say it out loud, all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may love this line, love this word so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you're taking down notes, the title of this weekend's sermon is update pending, update pending. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your presence. Give us ears to hear you. God, we're all a work in progress. We all have things that we're walking out and walking through. And God, we didn't need a reset. Reset is great for the beginning of the year. This whole moment was about an update. So God, today, I thank you as we lean into your word that you would speak to us so that we can all walk out marked by your presence and leave better than when we came in. If you receive that shout, amen. So I said a moment ago, but if you're new to Hope City, the beginning of every year, January, we do a series called Reset. And we talk about this reset moment, reset to begin again. It's a fresh start. It's a, it's a new beginning. The calendar changes from New Year's Eve to a new day. And it's not just in the natural, but there's a, there's a spiritual element to it. <clears throat> it's called the reset. All right, real quick, if you have your phone, I think this will work on a droid as well. I don't know your life, but... I'm going to do it on an iPhone just because I have one <laughs> and I've been led by the spirit of God. Um, so, so real quick, if you take your iPhone out and you go to uh, settings and I did this the other day because I was like, man, I don't know if my phone's up to date. And then I go to general and it says about, and it says software update. And to my surprise, I have not updated. There's a new update pending. And I said, What? This update includes important bug fixes. It addresses issues that prevent enabling, disabling advanced data protection. It also causes you know, them to track us. What? You can't say that loud. No, update pending. There's an update that has been pending. Some of y'all didn't even know you could do that because you haven't updated your phones since 2011. You're like, what are those little smiley things? They're called emojis. Amen. <laughs> but in all seriousness, this update... There's some key bug fixes. There's some key security breach issues that Apple said, we, we, need to, we need to provide an update. Now, I could wait or I could update it, download it, apply it so that my, my device could be, to be safe. So I was driving home one day after church. I mean, we had like, we had a phenomenal weekend. Like so many people set free and, and it's, it's like every weekend. But this, this specific weekend, like God showed up. It was I thought he was coming back. I'm like, do I hear the trumpet? Like it was, it was beautiful. And I'm driving home and uh, both Jackie and I's phones alert us that somebody has broken into our home. And so I go to our ring camera, like the one in the front, and I couldn't access it because I hadn't updated the software. So it was like update needed. I'm like, no. So I clicked on the little like driveway cam, couldn't see. It was like, what is going on? And so I called Jackie. I said, hey, real quick, um, I'm going to ask for forgiveness later, but I'm about to drive like a bat out of Birmingham. And she's like, okay. So I whipped around everybody and I drove anywhere between 40 and 95. So anyways, <laughs> I got home. Brecken was with me and I was like, I'm going to clear this house. And so I went and looked. I'm armed. Let's go. Like I go in and I told our officers, by the way, give it up for all of our safety team. Keep us safe week in and week out. Amazing. 
We had an issue the last service with somebody uh, with, with a health issue, and man, our first responder team was on, and I'm proud of our team. It's a beautiful thing. And maybe you're, uh, maybe you're called uh, in, that, in that field, and you would want to uh, serve and be a part of uh, that, man, jump on our dream team. Anyways, so I roll up in there, and I remember I was telling one of our officers about it, and he's like, hey, real quick. I don't like how you did any of that. It's like, that's like a TV cop. I was like, that's all I've seen. Amen. Like, anyways, I roll up in there and I found out some of y'all are like, what happened? Anyways, I need to update because I couldn't see anything. And I roll up in there, literally not sure what's going on. My son picked up a sign in the garage that says, frame your life with faith. I'm like, what are you going to do? Punch somebody in the faith? Like, what are you doing with that? Dad joke. Anyways, so I go in and I realize as this chair is scooting by me, because somebody, somebody had blessed us with a Roomba, a little vacuum that we named Beverly. <laughs> Forgive me if that's your name, but we call her Bev. Sweet Bev, stronger than she looks, picked up this chair and was just moving it around the house. So I get a phone call that says, sir, there's an intruder. Someone has broken in. I said, no, ma'am, it's just Beverly. Amen. She said, do you know her? I was like, unfortunately. <laughs> but we started having conversations. Like, maybe we should update our security. And by security, I mean our husky golden doodle Bella isn't cutting it, like with her little underbite. Now, some of you who are dog enthusiasts are like, what a great combo, a husky and a golden doodle. No, she's just husky. Like... <laughs> Like she wheezes and gets out of breath on a walk. Like she would shop in the Sears catalog in the Husky section. Like not big and tall. She'd be right at home at big and small. Amen. That's our Husky little golden doodle. But I sat down. You know what I did immediately when we cleared everything? I sat down and I updated all of the software because it was necessary on our phone. I'm going to paint a spiritual parallel all weekend. On our phone, there's a few steps we have to go through to get it to a place where we can make sure it's up to date. The first thing I need to do is download the update. So if you're taking down notes, we have to prepare for the, write this down, download. We have to prepare for the download. The same is true spiritually. This whole 21 days of prayer and fasting was us posturing ourselves in such a way to say, God, download in me more of you and less of me. More of you and less of me. I don't want to just go through the motions. In Texas, we have a lot of um, culture, cultural Christians. You know, you'll be driving on 10 and a guy in a big truck will cut you off and have a bumper sticker that says, Jesus is my co-pilot and God we trust. And then he flips you the bird. Like, and you're like, ah, this isn't adding up. Like my grandma used to say, oh baby, she's wild, but She's building her testimony. Okay, she's just building it every day. Amen. No, but we have this thing where we, we hear it, but do we apply it? There's a download, but what do we do with it? I haven't done anything with this download. It's just pending. Here's the truth. We're all a work in progress. But there is a point in our humanity where we go from all about me to now me as a transformed believer. Because again, Christianity is not about behavior modification, but it is about heart transformation. Now, I like to have fun. I like to tell stories. I like when people laugh. We like to have a good time. We have great music. Like this, Hope City is different. It's an amazing experience. But sometimes as the pastor, I have to step on your toes. I have to say the tables you're sitting around, Jesus would want to have flipped over. I have to say that relationship that you're in is a counterfeit situation because what you're doing is you're playing marriage. You're not actually married. Like I have to have these type of conversations. We have to talk about things that we're accepting culturally as normal. But we go to the Bible and we say, oh, let's just flip that page. We have to go from, I, I hear you to I'm applying it. Because it takes more than just receiving the download. Now, there's steps that I have to walk out in order to access the most recent updates on my phone. The same thing is true spiritually. You can't just, watch this, listen and leave. It's easy to listen and leave. There's no pressure on it. No, we don't have enough staff to go to over 7,000 people's houses and knock on the door and say, did you apply the word? We're like, good Lord, leave me alone. Like, 
stranger danger. Like, why are you on my front porch, sir? No, we, we, there's, there's an epidemic across the nation. Now, we have a lot of international followers, but I'm going to speak to the Big C Church in America specifically. We have a real issue with listening and leaving. We listen, appreciate it, preacher. It scratched an itch. It was good. Thank you so much. I checked the box. I came to church. Hopefully, God will bless me with an Escalade. Amen. I even scanned a little QR code. QR code, is that what they call it? Yeah, and gave five bucks. Amen. No, no, no. We can't just be listen and leave Christians. We can't just be hearers only. We have to be doers. Watch this, James 1, 22. I love the way the Amplified says this. It says, look at this, put up, put up, put up, put up. But prove yourselves doers of the word, actively and continually obeying God's precepts. And not merely listeners who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning, deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth, because we have loved to create our own biblical perspective based upon what our preferences are, based upon what makes us feel good, based upon what makes us feel emotionally steady. So, so I'll, I'll skip all the things that step on my toes. I'll skip all the things that irritate my spirit, man. I'll skip all the things that make me frustrated internal. Have you ever thought maybe it's a holy frustration? I'm going to preach a whole word on a holy frustration. Well, this thing just frustrates me. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit needling you and saying, hey, hey, it's time to grow. It's time to wake up. It's time to get better. It's time to get stronger. It's time to get braver. I'm preaching better than you're responding. I'm telling you, there's a different level of faith I'm feeling throughout this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Now, I've lost 16 pounds, and I've so wanted some Ben and Jerry's. I have. I've wanted, I've wanted some pistachio Ben and Jerry's, but I... I haven't done it because I've been fasting. Amen. I love what the book of Matthew says. Now, the very last line, verse 9 of chapter 13, is where I want to land for a moment. But I'm going to read through the whole thing. This is a parable. Jesus spoke this. If you go back to our parable series, I actually broke this down even more. But Jesus spoke this word. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and was sitting beside the Sea of Galilee. Large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, positioning himself as a teacher. While the whole crowd stood on the shore, he told them many things in parables, saying, listen carefully. A sower went out to sow seeds in the field. And as he sowed, some seed fell beside the road between the fields. Birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground where they didn't have much soil. And at once it sprang up, but it had no depth of soil. So when the sun rose, it was scorched because it had no roots. It withered away. Verse seven says, other seed fell among thorns and thorns came up and choked them out. Verse eight said, other seed fell on good soil. Come on, somebody say, I'm good soil. And it yielded grain, some a hundred times as much as was sown, some 60 times as much, some 30. Here's where I wanted to get to, verse nine. He who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. Let him hear and heed. Well, break that down a little bit more in layman's terms. Let him hear and apply it. Let him hear and walk it out. I'll take one clap. Let him hear and apply it. Let, let him hear and walk it out. Well, tithing's for everybody else, not for me. Let him hear and apply it. Well, generosity is for those that have a lot more money than me. Let him hear and apply it. Uh, holiness and righteousness, I, I'm young. You know, I'll get there one day. Let him hear and apply it. I'm just having fun right now. Let him hear and apply it. I've got a fever, and the only prescription is dancing at the club. Let him hear and apply. It's ridiculous. Now, we're either going to rise up. Again, work in progress. No, no perfect people allowed. I remember when the lady in the Kroger, right next to Captain Crunch, told my mama, I want to invite you to my church. And my mom said, people like us don't go to church. She said, what do you mean? She said, broken people. And the lady said this, and I love this. Maybe you've heard this before. She said, my pastor always says no perfect people are allowed at our church. So you're invited. You're, you're welcome at our church. Because here's the beautiful thing about the grace and the mercy of God. He'll take you in where you're at, but he will not leave you the way he found you. He will restore you. He'll put stitches where you've been putting go Diego, go band-aids. Amen. He will heal you because he's a personal God. So we connect in relationship to the spirit of God, almost like Wi-Fi at home to download. I, I couldn't just download it. I have to have it synced up to Wi-Fi. There's an area in our house that has 
really spotty Wi-Fi. And so when I move locations and I get closer to the source, the strength is, is better. The strength is, is more active. I can download things way quicker. The same is true spiritually. During this 21 days of prayer and fasting, what we're going to do tonight at the night of worship, the entire mission is to simply get closer to the source, to get closer to his presence. If you've ever wondered, how come I haven't heard from the voice of God in a while? Maybe you've strayed away from the source. It's like driving on the highway on a road trip and you're like, oh, this is my station. I love this song. This is my, whatever it is, country, hip hop, polka. I don't know your life. You know what I mean? Like whatever it is, you're driving along and listening and then you're like, oh no, I love this song. This is my song. And it's like, <laughs> because you've gotten too far away from the source. That's why these moments, 21 days of prayer and fasting are so important. It's to cling more to the heart of God. So if anything is maybe robbing you of that discernment or that still small voice, I need you to search your heart. Look at your life and see what's in your life or who's in your life that's been pulling you away from the source. Spiritually, we receive the download from the Holy Spirit. The other instructions playing the parallel, the other instructions my phone says, so it says this, you have to have enough battery life in order for, to receive this download, to download this update. But if you don't, it's necessary and essential to connect to a power source. So again, we make room for the download. And number two, we have to, we have to plug in. We have to be intentional about plugging into the presence of God. That's why we do the first 20 challenge every day. First five minutes in the word, next five minutes in worship, next five minutes in prayer, and then the last five minutes simply remembering all that he has done. That's why we have things like Midweek Chapel that's kicking back off this week. For those of you who love Midweek Chapel, it's at 11 a.m. every Wednesday at our headquarters. This is an opportunity to plug in. This is why we do semesters of HC groups because our church is large enough to serve a city, but we're small enough in groups to know each other each other. It's another opportunity to plug in. It's another opportunity to connect deeper in discipleship. Elbow the person next to you and say, it's time to plug in. Now, this is just the way my mind goes. I, I, while I wrote the line plug in, I said out loud, golly, Glade plugins are super gross. I don't know. Some of you, you walk into, you ever walked into somebody's house and you get punched in the nose by exotic tropical blossoms? You're like, oh, I think it coated my teeth. I don't know what that vanilla caramel twist. I want to help somebody get set free today. The reason your appetite is in seventh gear, you're like, why am I so hungry all the time? It's because you're using an ice cream flavor for the scent of your home. <laughs> Pastor Jackie last week revealed that she has a sweet tooth and it is true. She rations brownies for all of us. She's like, that's enough for you. It's enough for you. Like, babe, I can't grow a stronger beard with that tiny little brownie. And she's like, I'll cut you. I'm like, what are we talking about? And we all go to bed. We wake up the next day. It's gone. She gets up at two in the morning and finishes it off so she doesn't have to be tempted the next. It's a true story. You know what we don't do? We don't have Glade plugins around our house that smell like vanilla caramel ice cream. Some of you are like, I'm Texas. I got a Texas brisket scent. Amen, my God. You want to curb your appetite? Plug the Glade plug-in in that smells like a perm. Do that one. <laughs> if you don't know what a perm smells like, it is rough for business. If I could grow hair, I would have a tight Justin Timberlake gentleman's perm. <laughs> I'm processing just with Jackie. I'm sorry. You, I had hair when you married me. You remember that? I was like, remember that? All kidding aside, just like plugging in your favorite scent, like a Glade plug-in, when you plug into God's presence, when you plug into his word, you'll start noticing things changing. You'll start noticing a different level of sensitivity. There was a girl that came to prayer. I saw her like literally every day. She was there like clockwork. I was like, did we hire her? Like she was there every single day. And uh, towards the end of that, that Friday, it was the last 
they, I simply just walked by. We were praying. A bunch of people were just walking around praying for people. And I quickly had something. I said, I felt like the Lord wanted me to say this to you. And I just said it real quick. It was real brief. She ended up messaging and saying, hey, I wanted to tell you that this entire 21 days, I've been asking God for clarity in this. I've been asking God for peace in this. I've been asking God for direction in this. And she said, literally, eight minutes before the whole prayer moment was over, you just casually spoke it, but it was from the Lord. I got full clarity and peace in all three of them. I had been asking God for direction, and I finally got it. I finally got it. Because when you plug into his presence, I'm telling you, you will not come out of his presence the same way you entered. Everything will change. Pastor Jackie, she all the time says, God will write victory in your story. But the reality is it takes surrender. You have to yield yourself under his mighty hand, submit, lean in, obey his word. I'm telling you, there will be fruit that follows. So again, another plug, show up to worship night tonight. Plug into his presence tonight. If you need breakthrough, deliverance, or a miracle, I'm telling you, we believe miracles are going to break out in everybody's lives. Give God praise now. He can do it later. Just give him praise now. Well, watch this. Plugging in is key, but what it looks like is essential. A friend of mine, I've preached this for years, that the enemy knows he can't take you out, so he'll try to wear you out. I've got a friend who just came and spoke to our staff, and he said this, if the devil can't stop you, then he'll try to speed you up. I remember when the Lord spoke to me and told, like gave me the assignment for my life. Y'all, I ran, I was running. I was like, the will of God was behind me. Like I was out running it. I wasn't in a perfect cadence of his timing. Sometimes we think when God speaks a word, when we plug in, we need to speed up. But that's not always the truth. Sometimes we actually need to slow down. This 21 days of prayer and fasting, I slowed my pace down. We run really fast. Like, I only like run if I'm being chased. I don't like running. But when it comes to leadership and territory we're taking and the stuff that God's entrusting our church with, we run real fast. The momentum that Hope City has, it's a beautiful thing. I said it a moment ago that Hope City is different. But this 21 days of prayer, I slowed my pace down. I took less meetings. I spent less time on my phone. And instead, I spent more time in prayer. I spent more time in his word. Because I knew that prayer and his word throughout this 21 days, but you're a pastor, of course it needs to be your priority. No, no, no. I truly believe these set aside moments to plug in, receive the download is essential for where God is taking us. And I said this at the beginning of 21 days of prayer and fasting. If you're too busy to get into the presence of God, you're busier than God wants you to be. Come on, it's time to slow down and receive the download. So again, going back to the parallel, the phone, there's a little note that says this. You gotta be connected to the power source to, to have the update applied. It's the exact same thing with our spiritual walk. We have to be connected to his power. Catch this, oftentimes, that slowing down moment, we slow down long enough to hear his still small voice. I had person after person come up to me during this 21 days of prayer, and they said, Pastor Daniel, you know how you always say, like, let God wake you up in your sleep. They were like, I, would, I hate that idea. Like, I want to sleep. I need to get my rest. But so many moments in this 21 days of prayer, I felt a little nudge from the Lord, and I just got up out of bed and went and spent time in his presence. I've never done that in my life, but I felt the Spirit of God speaking to me. So again, going back to our phone, I don't know about you, but that reset season, that reset moment that your phone is being updated, it's the most frustrating. It may only be, you know, eight to 10 minutes. And sometimes if your Wi-Fi signal is bootleg, it's longer, but you can't take calls. You can't make calls. You can't receive text. You can't send text. You're just in this ditch, this technology ditch. And I feel like my human, my humanity, my codependency on technology is highlighted most in this moment. And then I start thinking like, well, how am I going to communicate with Jackie? Do I start writing letters? Do I ask her to be my pen pal? Like, do I default back to old English? Like, dearest sweet Jackie, it is I, your knight in shining armor. Like, is this what I have to do? Like, it's so frustrating. Wait, wave at me if you hate that little window of time where your phone's being updated. And okay, now I'm gonna ask you again, how many of y'all don't like that little window? Maybe it doesn't stress you out like me, but it does, okay. So we're waiting. We're in that waiting moment for the update. Spiritually, the same thing is true. 
How many of y'all, just by show of hands, transparency across every campus, even at home, put your, put your Cheerios down and just hit like an emoji hand. How many of y'all would say, yeah, the waiting season is a, is a frustrating season. But when we've been looking for a reset, it's not about a reset. It's about an update. This waiting season doesn't have to be a wasted season because he's equipping you. He's downloading new things in you and you're gonna come out of that waiting season stronger than when you went into it. It's necessary for growth. It's necessary for what's next. God has to do in you now what he needs to produce through you in the next. But if we don't slow down enough to hear his voice, we'll chase everything the wind blows. We'll jump into relationship. I just have bad luck with men. No, no, no. You need to get in the presence of God. I just have bad luck. I just, I'm drawn to the wrong women. No, you need to get in the presence of God. He is always speaking. We just have a lot of noise that keeps us from hearing. So number one, we download. Number two, we got to plug in. Number three, this is necessary. When all that's happened, now we choose to press on. Now we choose to press on. We've got the download. We're applying it. We're connected. We're plugged into his presence. And now we choose to press on. I love how in the word Paul frames this moment for us to grasp it in our humanity, but he's showing us what to do spiritually. Philippians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. Now, dear brothers and sisters, I've not achieved it, but I focus on one thing, this line right here, forgetting the past. Some of y'all need to let go of the past. And I don't even mean the broken parts. I mean the accolades. Some of y'all are carrying around all your trophies, wondering if God can do anything new in your life. He can. That's why your windshield is bigger than your rear view mirror. You're not going that way anymore. You're going this way. So forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead. Because you know what lies ahead? Good plans. You know what lies ahead? Uh, you taking more territory. What lies ahead is a hope and a future. Come on, somebody. When you're a daughter and a son of God, it doesn't mean you're not going to go through some things, but you know who's with you? The one who created everything, including you, who's with you in your corner, fighting for you in the midst of the madness, forgetting the past. This is what Paul says. I press on. Come on, somebody say, I press on. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. You see, the purpose of this time of slowing down is so you can press on to what God has for you. And it feels kind of, it feels a little counterproductive, right? Like, wait a minute, Pastor, you know, I need to slow down to move, move ahead. That doesn't make sense. But is stopping for gas unproductive? No, it's necessary. It's a necessary slowing down and pausing. You have to just pause for just a moment in order to refill to get to your destination. If you're driving an electric vehicle and you have to slow down long enough to plug your car in like a toaster, you get it. You have to do to get to move forward. In the Bible, we see this happen multiple times where God redirected and put different folks in a slowing down season so that they could receive a download from him a promise from him, direction from him, and ultimately fulfill the assignment God had placed within them. For example, Moses. Moses was in Midian. Moses was a weak, no, no, he was a meek man. See, a lot of times people think meekness is weakness. He was a humble man. He he was the one that said, I'm a friend of God. Moses had a relationship with God. God had Moses in Midian for 40 years. All the single people are like, my God. Am I in Midian? Amen. (laughs) Is there a man named Midian I'm going to (laughs) meet? Moses was in Midian for 40 years. God was training and equipping him. He was renewing him. Moses was receiving rest. He got married. He became a baby daddy. Come on. God (laughs) equipped him. And you know what it was? It was an update season. God was updating him so he could fulfill. And then we read about in Exodus 3 where he's out tending to the flock, his father-in-law Jethro's flock, and God speaks to him in a burning bush moment. He went from a simple shepherd to full-time assignment in, in one moment. This was all in the update season. Another man, Elijah, he was in uh, Kareth for one and a half years. Some of you are like, that's better than 40 years. Amen. He was being secured and shaped and molded by God so God could ultimately fulfill 
his promise in his life. God had him in the waiting season. If you want to read more about Moses, go back to the book of Exodus, read through that. For Elijah, you can read that in the book of first Kings. And then you look at Paul's life. Paul was in Arabia for three years. Paul was previously Saul persecuting and killing Christians. He, he, he despised anybody who called themselves a follower of Jesus. God arrested his heart, changed his name from Saul to Paul. And then Paul was in Arabia for three years. For what reason? To be developed by God so that God could trust him even greater. He was again in an update season. Wave at me if you feel like maybe you're in an update season. Come on, an update season. It's a good place to be. Maybe this year hasn't gone exactly like you were hoping, but it can still turn out to be the greatest year of your life. We serve a God who shaped and molded the entire world, spoke everything into existence and shaped and molded you in his image. You can study about Paul's life in the book of Galatians. All of these moments are so important. There's so many other folks throughout the word that had similar experiences, but here's what we see. God will take us. He will mold and shape us, recharge us, equip us, just like he did the three gentlemen I mentioned so that we can be equipped for what he has for us in the future. Because here's the truth, and maybe I'm only speaking out of personal experience. Everything is having your way. I would love to have a microwave, God. Wouldn't you? It's like, God, I need need a miracle in my finances. One minute on the clock. Like, don't stand in front of it, amen. (laughs) Bing. Like, our life has not been a microwave, God. We, we, we have more of a crock pot, God, where it is, it's a slow, the ingredients are all coming together like a good gumbo. Let's go. How many are ready for a little cooler weather? Come on a little bit. Hey, like a crock pot, God. Amen. No, we've noticed that most of our seasons, God said, no, 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 no. I still got ingredients. I'm adding to your life. You've got to stay right here and receive it. It's not instant gratification. It's not have it your way. That's Burger King. This is God. God says, I need need you to just trust in me even when you can't fully track me. And here's the truth. Now people people are really good about seeing people's highlights. Like, oh, y'all just seem lucky. Now you have no idea how much we've prayed. Like your kids just seem like they're just so good. No, you don't have, she's GI Jackie. Like it's a military. These kids, these kids salute her when they walk in the room. Like, no, the warfare, the stuff we've had to deal with, the stuff that we all have to deal with as Christians. I just thought when I served God, everything would be perfect. Have you read the disciples' lives? No, when you sign up for this, when you surrender your life. See, the enemy will say it was so much better in the world, man. So much better, like, like living your best life over here. Now there's a bullseye that's on your life as a Christian, but I'm telling you, his way is so much better. His way, there's so much more peace. His way, there's so much more joy. His way, there's so much more confidence. Let me encourage you for a moment with every eye closed just for a minute. Maybe you're here today and you would say, Pastor Daniel, I'm definitely in a crockpot season. The adventure of my life. I don't have much adventure in life. I feel like my joy is dimming. Maybe you have found yourself stuck in neutral. Let me encourage you with every eye closed across every campus. Maybe this is where God desires you to be. So he can take your time, take your attention. So that he gets the opportunity to capture your entire heart at a deeper level. So then ultimately in return, you will surrender your time, give your attention to him and fully devote your heart to him. More than anything, this pattern we've been talking about, the rhythm that we've been unpacking is not just some law of the universe, but it's actually a journey undergone by Jesus himself. We talked about Moses, Elijah, and Paul, but Jesus himself, just hear hear me, just with your eyes closed for a moment. Jesus himself was in the wilderness for 40 days. The Bible describes Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness as a period of testing, but it was preparation for him to walk ultimately in his public ministry. It was ultimately the journey that started his way to the cross 
so that he can make the ultimate sacrifice so that we could be made healed, so that we could be made whole, so that we could be fully forgiven. So if Jesus was in a preparation season, then we can position ourselves in an update season. So God, today I thank you for a, a beautiful community that I like to call family. We're choosing today to slow down. I speak on their behalf. We're choosing today to slow down so that we can receive your download. And then we're not just gonna be listeners and leave, we're gonna apply it. And we're gonna consistently and daily with intentionality plug into your presence. I said a moment ago, if the devil can't stop you, he'll try to speed you up. First Peter 5, 6 says to humble yourself under God's mighty hand. This is what I have found during this 21 days of prayer and fasting. When God elevates you out of something, he also elevates you into something new. He's adding to your life. Come on, say he's adding to my life. Come on, he's adding joy to my life. He's adding more favor to my life. He's adding more anointing to my life. He's adding more peace to my life. He, he's adding uh, more fight to my life. He's adding more courage to my life. I'm getting my joy back today. I'm getting my freedom back. He, he, come on, somebody. I feel this strong. He's adding to your life. The beautiful thing about a reset is it's a start over. But the beautiful thing about an update is he's adding to. Can we stand to our feet? Y'all getting anything out of this? Elbow the person next to you and say, God is updating you. Come on, he's updating you. He's updating you. It's an update season. I called Rodney and I said, hey, as we close out this weekend, so I'm talking about update. It's not a reset. It's an update. And he said, well, I have, I have a couple ideas. And he, there's two songs that we're going to, uh, well, it's a song and we're adding a vamp to it. But I want you to press in. If you need God to update some areas of your life, I want you to lift your hands across every campus and just prepare your heart for the download. Come on, prepare your heart right now for that download. Connect your heart right now to the source, and that is God Almighty, and plug into His presence. Where there is no one, there is new power, there is new freedom. The King. I lay I down my old flames to carry your new fire today. Cause this new one, come on, declare. Yeah. Where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom. The kingdom is here. I lay down.
Come on, if you believe it one more time, give him praise. I want you to shout, it's update season. Come on, shout if you believe it, it's update season. With every eye closed just for a moment. We have to close out every service with an opportunity. The Bible says in Romans 2, verse 4, that it's the goodness and love of God that draws a man or a woman's heart to a place of freedom. I can't change you. The reality is in our humanity, it's, a it's tough for us to change ourselves. We all are in need of a Savior. Here's what we believe. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. Healed, delivered. He writes victory in your story, throws your sins as far as the east as the west. Everything changes when you plug in to his presence. Here's the second opportunity. Pastor Daniel, I've given my life to Jesus, but oof, I've disconnected. I got too far away from the source. And the reality is I, I got caught up in the prodigal life. It's been all about me, myself, and I. But today I felt this reminder from the Spirit of God to come back, to connect to the source again, to realign my heart to his heart. I received that download. I'm going to apply it and I'm not just going to listen and leave. I need the spirit of God to restore and heal my heart and heal my life and heal my family. So those are the two invitations. I'm going to give my life to Jesus for the first time. I'm going to count to three and I just want you to slip up your hand across every campus. If you're watching at home, just say yes to Jesus. Our team, our moderators will help you. One, I want to give my life to Jesus for the very first time. Two, I want to rededicate my life. I want to make things right. I want to reconnect to the source. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I'm looking all over the room. I see you and, and you and you and you and I see you and 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 come on, somebody. I see you back here, my friend. I mean, come on, Hope City. You can give God praise more than that. I see you all the way in the back. I saw you all the way in the back. Come on, we're all going to pray across every campus. Those watching online, H Crew, join us. Say this out loud, Jesus, here's all my sin. Here's all my struggles. Here's all my issues. I'm asking today for forgiveness. I repent of all my wrongdoings. I want to reconnect and connect my heart to your heart. Jesus, thank you for hanging on that cross, giving up your life for mine so that I could live a life filled with hope, filled with freedom, and filled with joy. From this moment on, I'm choosing to live for you. You're my Father, you're my Savior, and you are my Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, Hope City, go wild. Come on, Hope. 